Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Today we have a very special surprise. and I know that my wife and I are super honored and privileged to, to have uh, our shepherd in the house tonight. And um, I remember 23 years ago, this December, I was, um, I was lost, broken. Our family was broken. I was an atheist. I said, there is no God. And how many know that sometimes, you know what, life will do something. They'll play a number on you so heavy, so hard that you literally fall straight to the ground. And, uh, and how many know you can't fall off any further from the ground, right? And I walked into a church on, uh, on Ventura Boulevard and Violent Avenue. And it was in his presence church. That was 23 years ago, this December. And uh, I remember walking in and very, very reserved and just, it was different. The church is kind of like, man, I think we were like the first or second Hispanics walking into a whole white church. We're like, what the, what is all this, man? It's too much white people up in this place. I mind you, I had some issues, okay? I had personal issues. Uh, I was a very, uh, very, very lost man, very broken man. But as I kept hearing my pastors speak, as I kept hearing the word, as I kept hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, as the, as the word kept coming forward my my life started changing and and uh and there was transformation happening because how many know that you can you can be someone that's listening and you're getting a lot of good information but information without transformation is dead religion and uh and my life and my family and my children we were changed we've seen so many amazing miracles and uh there's only been two churches i've attended in my entire 23 years of walking with christ the first one was the one i gave my life to christ and that was in his presence church the second one is elevate church from there i know no other church he's been my shepherd for 23 years this december and continues to be a great blessing and uh there's something about honor isn't there listen when you honor someone the honor will chase you down so always remember Honor those that are around you. So today, I want us to honor my shepherd, my pastor, Mel Ayers. Let's give it up for him. Come on, church. Give it up for the bishop. Well, it's good to be here at Elevate Church. We are so proud of you. And your pastors, Pastor Mauricio and Virginia, they've just been the greatest people in our lives. And um, we're just seeing God move. Just being here today, I can see that you're ready to take the city. And uh, that there's going to be miracle signs and wonders. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to fill this city. You know, once the fire begins to burn and start moving, then all dead religion will be exposed and the living God will be known and Jesus Christ will have his way. And that's what's happening here in this place right now in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus started with just 12 in the upper room. He had 120, but it was really 12 that went out and they were witnesses of Jesus Christ. And that's what you are and not. you can win the city. You, the whole city can change. The whole city. So I just thank you for having me here. It's good to be here. Um, shoo. Okay. All right. You know, if you, if you hold your ear to the word of God, the light of the word, the entrance brings light to every single person. God's going to use you in winning multitudes to Christ multitudes he's sending you to a place that someone wouldn't ordinarily go because it's it's known for something else <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something without the true gospel of Jesus Christ people are empty and he's going to give you eyes to see that everyone there needs exactly what you're doing and you're going to have a boldness and a fire and a courage on you that's going to destroy the obstacles and mountains in your way. So you go with great anticipation and expectation that you're going to change the world, that the world's going to be changed in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give God a great big place for that. <laughs> Woo! We need a move. God's moving right now. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11.
Hebrews 11, verse 1. I know you've been in a series called Stretch. I love your pastors, man. I got so many great stories. How many want to hear some secrets about Pastor Mauricio in Virginia? Anybody want to hear that? You, you know, on, on second thought, they know a lot about me. So I, I just DM me later and I'll, I'll just get to you and we'll, we'll do something. I'll hold off on that. Now, faith is, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Everybody say framed. framed. The worlds were framed by the word of God. By the word of God. Not by feelings, not by emotions. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. How many have a dream in your heart? You have something in here that isn't out there yet, but you know God has something for you, and you feel like you're almost ready to birth something. You're feeling like you have to live for this, or life won't be worth living. How many have something in here right now? Just lift your hand. Sure, you have things that haven't been seen with the natural eye, but yet are true and real in here. You have to frame your world. You must begin to speak the word of God and begin to frame your world. And as you do, he will paint the picture inside the frame. Amen. It will become visible to everybody. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Faith is the substance. What I have in here, you can't see it. But to me, it's as real as if you could see it. That's why I'm excited. That's why I live for the Lord. That's why I talk the way I do because what's in here demands evidence from me if it's real. I can't say I believe in something and yet you can't tell in my life that I believe in it. Have you ever been around somebody that's so obnoxious? All they talk about, blah, 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 blah. I'm, going to, I'm going to Utah, I'm going to Utah, I'm going to Utah, I'm going to Utah, I'm going to Utah. Shut up already. They can't shut up because it's real to them. They already have gone ahead and they see what God's about to do. Are you here? They're obnoxious. What's wrong with those people? They're birthing something. They have something in here that you can't see it, but it's just as real to them as if it was already done. That's what you have in you. They're faithing. They have faith. It's the way God moves. Look at Genesis chapter 1. It's the first book of the Bible, okay? How many are there? Go woo woo. How many need more time? Don't say anything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was just a black hole. It was just nothingness. There was nothing there. But he created the heaven and the earth in it, out of it. He could already see what he was about to create. It was already in him, the lands, the animals, everything. He could already see it. It's just nothing had been happened yet. But it was just as real to God as if it was already so. Okay. The earth was without form and void. The darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Here's the Holy Ghost, and he's just waiting. He knows exactly what's in the Father. They're one spirit. It's just the same spirit. But, but nothing's happening. He's not going to move. And he knows what God wants to do. He knows the will of God for that, that void, that darkness that's there. Then God said, everybody say, then God said. He said, let there be light. And there was light. So the Holy Spirit's waiting. He knows what God wants to do. But he won't move. Until then, God said. Are you listening? You have to get this because we're going to find out he's made us in his likeness and image. And we're supposed to move the same way God moves. God doesn't make you like him and then expect you to move differently than him. Okay, so let's, let's read. Say, then God said. So every time I say, every time I give you a, 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 a verse, it's going to say, then God said. I want you to say, then God said one. So say it with me. Then God said one. Then God said two. And you just keep counting, okay? The first, first service had a real tough time with this. <laughs> After one, they had no idea where to go. So don't tell them I said that. 
Verse 3. Verse 6. Verse 9. Verse 11. Verse 14. Verse 20. Do you think he's trying to tell us something? (laughs) Then God said, then God said, then God said, then God said. And in his very next breath, look at verse 26. Verse 26. Well, let's look at 25. God made the beast of the earth according to its kind. Say according to its kind. Cattle according to its kind. Say according to its kind. Everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. Say according to its kind. So he made everything to reproduce after itself. Ducks make ducks. Dogs make dogs. People make people. Disciples make disciples. And God just keeps saying and saying and saying. Look at verse 26. Then God said, say, then God said. Come on, this, he's staying in the same vein. He hasn't changed. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. You, got, you have dominion over all the creeps. <laughs> come on, come on. Hey, aren't you glad about that? How many have run into some? Woo, glad I got dominion. Then God said, now, let me make her after my image and likeness. I want her to operate the same way I do. I want her to know who I am. I want her to live like I live, do what I do. There's darkness. It's not there yet. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what the will of God is for you, what what God's put in your heart. He's filled you in your mind. You're excited about, you know there's more. You know there's a purpose. You know you need to be at another level, but he won't do anything. He'll just hover until you say it. Are you listening? He's hovering. Say he's hovering. Come on, you got to frame your world. In fact, you know, when, when David made the, made the uh, David, anybody been to Florence and seen the David? It's very impressive. You walk in and there he is. And they said, how did you do that? He said, I just got a piece of marble and I could see him in the marble. And I just started cutting away all the stuff that wasn't supposed to be there. When you have a dream and you begin speaking, there's some things that aren't going to work in your dream. There's some people that aren't going to make it in your dream. They're awesome. Nothing wrong with them, but they just don't fit with where you're going. Creating that dream, framing your world is as much about getting rid of some stuff as it is saying some stuff. Come on, there's TV shows you shouldn't be watching. Ooh, I hit a nerve there. (laughs) Glory to God. Oh, yeah, they had a good plot. No, it's just porn. It's just porn. Come on, you got to get serious about where God's taking you. You got to get serious about it. You got to cut some stuff out. You got to get around some people, some believers. You need some rip the roof off friends. You need some guys that will lower you down, cut the roof off, put you right in the middle of Jesus. You got to have some foxhole friends that stay around you. Wake up, wake up, stop talking like that. Stop living like that. No, all things are possible in the name of Jesus. You've got to have those kind of relationships. You get them right in the house of God. Because where you're going, you're going to have to fight your flesh. You're going to have to fight the flesh of others. You're going to have to fight the devil. You're going to have to fight all those he sins. And you've got to be totally laser beam focused with people around you that know where you're going and they're going to help you get there. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Come on, y'all are quiet. That's good preaching. Go to Mark chapter 10. So you've got to have faith. You've got to live by faith. That means you have it here. It's not out there yet. You just have to start speaking it. And you see the Holy Spirit bring it to pass. I used to drive around uh, Beverly Hills and Bel Air. When I first came to town, I grew up in a home. I grew up in a nice home all my life. And I'm just a home guy. 
I don't want to live all my life in an apartment. Some people do. They love it. They love it. That's good. Not me. I need a home. I'm just generational. It's just the way I live. It's the way I want to live. So I would get in my little Fiat, F-I-A-T, fix it again, Tony. They break down all the time. And, and, and I, I would get in and I'd drive around Beverly Hills and I'd go to these open homes. And I'd walk in, me and my raggedy self, and those real estate people know that I can't afford a house. In fact, they look at me like, is he here to kill me? Or, <laughs> And so I would just look at it, and they would say, uh, excuse me, how can you afford something like this? And I would tell them, my father's very wealthy. <laughs> Finances will never be a problem. I've peeked in on how he lives on streets of gold and gates of pearl and walls of jasper. And I'm telling you right now, finances will never be a problem. But what was I doing? I'm fading. I'm believing something is the will of God for my life that isn't out there yet. Look, that's when faith is in play and will have its way when you say, Ooh, I'm a rap artist. <laughs> Listen, that's tweetable. That's tweetable. Listen, faith is in play and will have its way when you say. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you got to say something. Yeah. What? It's the way God does it. It's, it he, it's how he moves, and he's given us a word for it so we can define it, and it's called faith. you got to live by faith. Mark 10, are you there? How many need more time? Woo-woo. Mark 10, verse 46. I know this is stretch. I'm just giving you some foundation. I'm going to stretch you in a second. Mark 10, 46. They came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then he warned him to be quiet. They warned him to be quiet. And he, and he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So this, this blind man's there, and he, he senses Jesus walking by. Now, he calls him son of David. That means he believes Jesus is the Messiah. Who he says he is, he believes it, because he knows the Messiah is going to come through David's lineage. And so he calls him son of David, and he cries out, son of David! And all the other people who are looking at him like he's a nobody because he's a beggar and he's blind. And they're saying, shut up. And he goes, no, you shut up. Son of David! And he cries out all the more. Why? Because his answer is there. Yeah. Jesus doesn't have your answer. He is your answer. Come on, are you listening? More of him means more victory. More of him means more of everything. The abundant life is in Christ. And as you draw close to him, there's your answer right there. And he goes over to him. And let's read it. A miracle's happened. I'm reading without my glasses. Oh, my gosh, it just happened right now. No. <laughs> he began to cry out, Son of David. And they warned him to be quiet, and he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. When you walk in faith, it stops him right in his tracks. I know you're busy. I know you got a whole world to take care of. But he's never too busy for you. He's never, oh, he'll stop right. How would you like to have faith that'll stop him right in his tracks? How would you like to know no matter what he's doing, when you're faithing, when you believe it in here, it's yet to show up out there, but you begin to say it, how many know it stops him right in his tracks? Glory to God. He, you have his attention. Let's read what he says. He stood still. Say he stood still. And commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying, be of good cheer, rise. He is calling you and throwing aside his garment. He no longer sees himself as a beggar. He throws aside the beggar's garment. Why? Because now he sees it on the inside that his answer is right there. Are you listening to me? Do you remember the guys with the fishes and the loaves? He goes, we got to feed these people. They remember. That's Amen. All of a sudden, there's thousands of people and they need to feed them. We just have some fishes and loaves. When you talk from your own life and your own strength, it's always from scarcity. You'll never have enough. It's the devil's favorite message. It's not enough. 
But when your source is standing right by you, then it's always more than enough. All we have is some fishes and loaves. Bring it here. Watch and see what I do. You've got to remember that you're in Christ and he's in you. That you never talk from scarcity. It's always going to be more than enough. If he gave you his only son to die on a cross, what is more valuable that he will withhold from you now? All things, tell you, all things are possible. So he calls him. He said, be a good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do? Oh, you know, I need a Mercedes. I need a better camel. Uh, you know, let's see what else. You know, I could use some groceries. And he knows he's blind. Why is he asking him, what do you want me to do for you? You got to say it. He needs to hear you say it. He needs to hear your confession that you believe that your answer is in him. Everybody shout, say it. Say it. Tell the person next to you, say it. say it. I have it in here. I can already see it. When it happens out there, it won't be more real to me than what, I, what I'm feeling right now. I have it. I can see it. Holy Spirit's ready to bring it to pass, but I got to say it. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that house that I walked through in Beverly Hills. I had, to, I had to have more character, more integrity, more finance. I wasn't ready for it, but he brought it to pass. But he brought it to pass. I had to have patience for it. I wasn't ready. There, I would have lost everything. Patience is the weapon that forces deception to reveal itself. Are you listening? I, I was deceived if I thought I could take care of that house. I couldn't have done it. I needed to grow and mature. There's things about you that you have to get rid of, and it's God's going to start cutting it away, And but what you see in here is going to come to pass. Patience is the weapon that forces deception to reveal itself. Come on, let God reveal some things about you that you need to get rid of. Just go ahead and stay in the house of God. Stay at Elevate Church. Stay here and let the Spirit of God. There's an anointing in this house. It lifts the burdens and destroys the yokes of bondage. It's so powerful. Go to Mark 11. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith is has made you well. He didn't say your feelings. He didn't say your anxiety. He didn't say what you really need is known. To, no, no, no. You got to say it. Your faith has made you well. He didn't say, okay, I'm awesome, aren't I? I laid hands on you and now you receive, I made you well. No, he said, your faith has made you well. You have to stay in faith. You have to be believing God. You got to start speaking it and it brings forth evidence in your life. God, they won't be quiet. They're just fading. Leave them alone. They're just fading. But I don't get it. You don't have to get it. God didn't give you what he gave them. Ain't quit worrying about what other people are doing. Just get it for yourself. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Go to uh, uh, Mark 11. I want, I want to give you one point in this. You already know all this. I know that you've been taught this. But I want to show you something. Mark 11, 22. Well, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter, no. Uh, it's also good. You hate to leave anything out. Let's look at 11. Jesus went to Jerusalem and in the temple when they had all things and the hour was already late. He went out. The next day they had come out of Bethany. He was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves. He went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. But it's dressed up like it's the season. It's dressed up like it has fruit. You see in the, on the fig tree, the fruit come first and then the leaves. It's dressed up like it knows everything, like it has power, like it has fruit, but there's nothing on it. Jesus cursed that fig tree and said, we're not going to have that anymore. There's a new king in town. And when I'm here, there's going to be power.
power. There's going to be evidence. There's going to be victory. There's going to be deliverance. But the Pharisees are all dressed up in all their pomp and regalia. They, have every, they look like they have everything going on, that they are people of God. But you get close to them, nothing. It's empty. It's hollow. He said, we're done with that kind of dead religion. I'm here now. I'm going to come and live in you. And you're going to be powerful. And you're going to see things come to pass. And he said, we're done with everybody being dressed up. But they have no power. Are you here? Yeah. You've got to expect the greatness of God from your life. You're a child of God. I said, you're a child of God. If he lives in you and you live in him, then things change. Worlds change. Lives change. Glory to God. Okay, let's, let's keep going. So, look at verse 20. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Say, dried up from the roots. Rabbi, the fig tree which you curse is withered away. It's withered away. It's dried up from the roots. When you're living by faith, you don't handle addictions just through medical devices. They dry up from the roots. Bondages wither away. You have to go to the root of it, and the one who goes to the root of it is Jesus Christ. Are you listening? You've got to live by faith, and all of a sudden, I bind allergies in the name of Jesus. I used to have allergies to animals. My wife's an animal lover, so... The animals were staying, and I was leaving is what was happening. <laughs> and so I, I got my cat, and I, I, I put it in my lap every day, and I would sit there for two hours. I bind you allergies. and then they, My eyes are itching. I'm crying. I'm coughing. I'm gagging. I'm, oh, my gosh. God said, don't give up. After three days, no more allergies. Listen, I went to the root of it. I needed faith to believe that God was better and greater than allergies. Come on, somebody. you got to believe. It'll wither away and dry up. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. My message that I'm preaching to you is not going to change your life. It's the message you preach to you. And prophesy over your life that will change your life. you got to speak every day and say it in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm the head, Amen. not the tail. Not the I'm above only, I'm not, beneath. not beneath. I'm a child of God. Child of God. I'm in Christ. I'm He's in me. He's in me. We're, one We're one together. The blood of Jesus blood. has washed me clean. Washed me. I, am I am the righteousness I am. of God in Christ Jesus. Victory is mine. Everything I put my hands to will be blessed. My life is blessed. My bank accounts are blessed. My family is blessed. I have covenant promises, covenant blessings. God is for me, not against me. My enemies come one way, they flee seven ways. Anything that comes against me, God can handle it. He is my victory. I'm victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give Jesus. Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. My God. My God. Sit down. That sounds better. Than, oh, my gosh, my wife's mad at me. My job, I think they're going to fire me. The cat's on welfare. Dog's going homeless. I don't know. Everything's going wrong. No, no, no. You have to prophesy and speak faith over your life. How many feel better than when they came in? Faith is high right now. Amen. I know that you've probably heard about this. Saw the, how many saw Narnia? All the Chronicles. Do you want the movies? Okay. It's children's stories about the magical land of Narnia. In the second book, Prince Caspian, Lucy enters Narnia again, and she hasn't seen Aslan, this lion figure who is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. She's not seen him in a long, long time, and so they have a wonderful reunion. And Lucy says to Aslan, who represents Christ, Aslan, you're bigger now. And Aslan says, Lucy, that's because you're older. You see, Lucy, every year that you grow, you will find me bigger. You
you never get to the end of God. You never get to the end of his word. Every word, you can never get to the end of it. It always teaches, it always ministers. But you have to grow and stretch. We learn we have to live by faith on this earth. But let me tell you something. This earth is not going to last forever. We're just pilgrims passing through. We're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day. And we're going to have to give an account of ourselves. And if we have lived for ourselves and lived selfishly, then he's going, he's going to ask us why. We're going to have to say it in front of him because I don't know. I just live for me and not you. Jesus said this, I came to seek and save those who are lost. Sure, we love that we can believe God for our homes and our families, but your family needs to be an end times family. They, those kids need to know how to win people to Jesus. You have to have souls in your life. Would you turn, uh, would you put up on the screen Proverbs 11.30, the amplified version. Can you turn to Proverbs 11.30? Is this okay? Okay, got, it got quiet in this Pentecostal fire baptized church for a second. <laughs> Didn't know what happened. It was like... I'll tell you a funny story. We had a, we, we when I was in uh, uh, a little church that I used to go to, uh, there was a there was a blind guy and he lived downtown and he could hardly make it and he was selling his body for money just so he could eat and I somehow I connected with him and I would go down every week and just bring him groceries and everything and so then I got him to come to church with me and uh, so we're sitting there and this man like you're having right now the praise that goes on in here and the worship and the lifting your hands it's going on man we got it going on and then all of a sudden there's a holy hush that comes over the congregation and he's on the front row with me and there's a holy hush and I'm telling you it lasted for about almost over a minute nothing no and all of a sudden he yells out hey where'd everybody go <laughs> he, he thought everybody left and they left him there true story true story <laughs> We did exactly what you're doing right now. We busted up laughing. I don't know if it was holy laughter or not, but we were laughing. Anyway, let's read it. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the consistently righteous. You know what the Amplified Classic says? The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures and wins souls for God, and he gathers them for eternity. You better have some souls that are going into eternity with you if you're wise. Or God's going to say, why were you compromised? I died on a cross for you. I gave you everything. Why were you compromised in your faith? He said, the fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous. That means that we can be Christians and still live a compromised life before God. You must be a soul winner. You must be a soul winner. That's why Jesus came. Look at Matthew 4. Look at Matthew 4. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay, Matthew 4. I was crushed by these scriptures I'm sharing with you right now. I was a pastor. And, I, and my, my theology was, well, I, I gather people in the church and they go out and win souls. And then God looked at me and goes, you're so unwise. You have no wisdom. I'm, what are you talking about? He said, if you're wise, you're gathering people to go into eternity with you. There's trees of life in your life. But there are thousands of people get saved in his presence all the time. <coughs> For him, not good enough. He, I said, he said, I'm not talking to you as a pastor. I'm talking to you as my child. You're not like me. You're letting everybody out. You don't live like I live. You don't feel like I feel. I died on a cross for these people. This should break your heart that there might be people that won't make it into heaven. Matthew 4. Let's look at verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He doesn't mean repent for your sins because he hasn't died for your sins. He's saying, I want you to repent from the way you're living. I want you to start following me 
and not following the world. You have to turn around and stop, stop living for the world and start following me. Verse 19, he said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. I'm not going to suggest it to you. It's not, a, <clears throat> it's not a choice that you have, that you could do. He said, if you are following me, you will just become one because I will make you that way. You can't follow me every day and not be a fisher of men because that's what I live for is to win the hearts of people so they can go to heaven. That's what I'm here for. I'm all about it. And if you're with me, you're going to be all about it too. And that's what happens to us Christians. Every, every disciple is a Christian, but not every Christian is a disciple. No, no, no. You, you have to let this fall on you and crush you. You just have to, you just have to go, oh, I've got to change my life. This isn't me. I need to change my life because I, I'm compromised in my walk with Jesus. Because if I wasn't, I would love to win people to Christ. All those people around me that haven't heard about Jesus that would have to ask me if I'm a Christian? We're talking about stretch, right? Yeah. This is your stretch right here. You cannot live for yourself any longer. You cannot love the applause of the world more than you love the applause of God. Amen. You cannot be worried about what people might think of you, what people might say. They might reject you. Jesus said they did it to me. If they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. There's a lot of Christians that are trying to live safer than Jesus. Come on, church. We can win this whole valley. This week, we can win it. This week, we throw our nets out. These guys weren't cane pole fishers. They didn't fish for one fish at a time. They threw a net out to gather the schools of fish that were there. What's your net worth? We, we care more about well, our portfolio. When somebody says, what's your net worth? You think they're talking about your portfolio. God's talking about your net. Is it valuable? Are there souls in it? Or are you compromised in your walk with Jesus? You might not know it. You might be finding out today, I'm compromised. Great change. Repent from that lifestyle. God's not mad at you. He just wants you to start being close with him. you got to get close with Jesus. You have to know him. If you know him, you want souls in your life. Do you remember the, remember the many, many will say to me one day, Lord, Lord, and I'll tell them, I never knew you. They thought we were walking together, but I never knew them. But we prophesied. We did all this stuff. We did what you want. We led praise and worship. I was an awesome singer. I played guitar. I had it down. I never knew you. Because you were operating with what I gave you. I gave you the anointing. I gave you the gifting. All you were doing was receiving the whole time. Everything I gave you, you were operating. You were enjoying but I didn't know you. I showed you me. You never gave me you. Yeah. Intimacy is into me, see. That means, Lord, here I am. Change me. We never had a relationship. You just received my giftings. Yeah. Amen. We'll go to Revelations. Now, you know when we get to Revelations, this is serious. <laughs> okay? I'm almost done here. I went so long in the first service. I'm so sorry. I'm, a, I'm apologizing. I only have another hour left here. <laughs> Let's see. Verse 7, 21 7. Tell me when you're there. Boy, that sounds awful. But I like it. <laughs> Chapter 21, verse 8, 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he'll be my son. He's talking about you're going to go to heaven. You're going to miss hell and go to heaven. You're going to overcome all that. I've paid for all your sins, and you and I are going to be with each other forever. But 
the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Those who don't make it into heaven cast into the lake of fire. We all know the story. But look who he mentions first. I mean, he mentions murderers, abominable, sexually immoral, but the first one he mentions are cowards. Everybody go, oh, yeah, me too. That's what happened to me. You coward, Mel. You care more about what they'll think of you rather than about what they'll think of God. I was a coward. I couldn't accept that when Jesus came to baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire. All cowards. You know what else he says? He starts with cowards. He ends with liars. There are plenty of people that will call me in that day, Lord, Lord. They're lying. I was never their Lord. They never did what I asked them to do. I came to seek and save those who are lost. There are people around you every day. You have to go get them. You have to be bold and courageous. You have to have fire on your life. Uh, go to Proverbs 21.10. I'm 24.10. I'm done. Can I get one more scripture? I'm done. You sure? You positive? Okay. 24.10. Say cowards. Liars. These, I'm just giving you these scriptures because these is what, this is what wrecked my life. I am not going to stand before God and tell him that I live for me after he died for me. It changed my life when I got saved. But there has to be evidence in my life that my life has changed. Amen. 24.10 If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What's the day of adversity? Let's read on. Deliver those who are drawn towards death. Hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Does not he who weighs the heart consider it? Doesn't he who knows your heart know you're lying? He knows you're faking. He who keeps your soul, doesn't he know it? Will he not render to each man according to his deeds? If you faint in the day of adversity, if you're afraid to share your faith, if people are out there and you can't share your faith and testimony of the greatness of God in your life, it doesn't matter how big a Bible you have. I don't care how many faithful days you go to church. It makes no difference the lingo you know. I don't care how big a church go or whatever you're doing. If you faint in the day of adversity, if you can't share your faith and be happy about what God has done in your life and you want people to come to Christ, if there are no trees of life in your life, no matter what you think is a plus for you, it's nothing. It's amen or oh me. Come on, somebody. We can win this valley. You got to stretch now. I was, I came out to LA. I was failing in life. I had no ambition. I had a bad upbringing. I didn't know what to do with my life. I came out here and I thought I will go be an actor and a songwriter and I just didn't want to fail in front of all my parents and my friends. So I came out here, I got hooked up with the wrong people, started doing cocaine, drinking. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I was a carouser. I was living for myself. One day riding on the L.A. freeway, I was hungover. My whole goal was to go back to my apartment, sleep it off, and then go do the same thing over again. Go to work, get some cash, go do it over again. God filled my car. I couldn't believe he loved me. I couldn't believe he wanted anything to do with me because I didn't want anything to do with me. But there he was. He came after me. I pulled on the side of the road and I just started bawling my eyes out. I couldn't believe it. For two hours I was there. It went by so fast. From that moment on, no more drugs, no more drinking, nothing 
else. I just started pursuing him. Why? I found someone who was better than everything else I was looking for. Have you forgotten that you have someone that's better than the world that you're living in? I just gave my testimony to him. It took me about 60 seconds. You got a minute? You got a minute? Everybody where you are has a minute. You have to cast your net. You have to be a soul winner. <laughs> Try it. Well, I keep stumbling. Do it again. Well, it didn't. Do it again. They reject it. Do it again. Every restaurant I go into, they bring my food. Hey, bro, we're going we're gonna to pray over our food. Is there anything I can pray for you? <laughs> They're nervous right away. How about, how about your school or your mom or your dad? Usually somebody in trouble. Or, yeah, you know, I got, okay, let's pray. Now, right here? Yeah, let's pray right here. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray. I know you love this man. You got a plan for his life. Fill him up, oh God. Let him believe you for great things. We pray for his mom, blah, 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 blah. Now just say this with me. Say, Jesus, come into my life. They fall right and they just pray right there. <laughs> what? It's what they wanted to do. But somebody has to tell them that's what they need. You can't be afraid. You can't shrink back in adversity or your strength is small. While your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed. My buddy, Kevin and his wife, I know they've been here, the golfs. They were in Alaska and they were hiking and they stopped by this creek and this pool that the creek went into and they were just, had their feet in the, the pool and they were just there resting and all of a sudden a huge brown bear jumped out of the woods and jumped right into the pool and it scared them. But what he was after was the salmon. And he went in there because he had cubs up there and he wanted to get something to feed them. And he got in there and he grabbed the salmon. He was hunting for salmon and he got one. You know, salmon are amazing. They have a GPS system in them that even though they might be 2,000 miles away, when they're ready to lay their eggs, they have to go back to where they were born. They fight everything. Strong currents. They fight mileage. They fight jagged rocks they fight bears but it makes no difference they come back to where they were born and there's people in this room right now you find yourself back home you find yourself back with God you've been through hell and back you've been challenged by life there's been tragedies there's been difficulties you have difficult situations things are happening that are painful but yet you find yourself in God's house. You've come back home. God brought you back home because he wants to come into your life and be your God and give you peace and joy and walk with you every day. He's not mad at you. He's not disappointed with you. He loves you dearly. His arms are open. He just wants to know, do you want me in your life? All you have to do is invite me and I'll come in. Come on, he's brought you home. I want to lead you in that prayer. If you're here today with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today and you would say, Pastor, if you're going to pray, pray for me. That's what I want. I need the Lord in my life. There's a place in me I can't fill. I've tried everything. I'm going to, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, you just slip your hand up in the air. This is between you and God. No one's looking around. This is your moment. I've come back home. God brought me back home. I need you in my life, Lord. Would you come and change my life? Would you be real to me? I want to know you and not just know about you. I'm counting right now. You just slip your hand up in the air. Let me see it. I'll just tell you to put it right back down. One, two, three. Slip your hand up in the air right now. I see one, two, three, four, five, six in the back, seven in the back, eight. Just put your hands up one more time. Put your hands up one more time. Let me see. Now, with your hands up, just you. I want you to catch your eyes with mine. Just catch your eyes with mine. Just look at me. On my best day, I can't get you to lift your hand to a God you can't see. Let me tell you what happened today. The living God brought you here so he could speak to you 
and assure you that he loves you and he wants to be in your life. Will you let me pray for you? Come right now. Just come right now. Come on. Come on. If you lifted your hand, just come right now. You won't be the only one. Just go ahead and stand up. Come on. Come on, church. Let's welcome them. Come right now. Come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. You won't be the only one. Come on, church. Come on, church. Stand right up here. Stand right up here. Stand right up here. God bless you. Come on, there's more. There's more. So awesome. So awesome. I want to pray for you. Would you just, some people need encouragement. I get it. Go to a place you don't know everybody. Would you just turn to the person next to you and just politely, beautifully say, I'd go with you if you want to go. You don't have to go by yourself. I'll go with you. I won't let him hurt you in any way. I'll go with you if you want to go. Okay. I just feel like there's more. I can sense it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. sense God pulling you out of your chair. You're thinking I should be up there. I should go. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. They're coming right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right here. Come on, church. Here they come. This is it. This is the one right here. Come, come. Come, come. Come on. They need your help. They need your help. Come on, come on. This is God calling you home. You've come home. Come, come, come right here. Come. Woo! Wow. I want to pray for you. I want you to pray this out loud. I want you to remember all the days of your life that nobody forced you to come here. God pulled you up out of your seat and he wanted you in his life. So I want you to pray this with me. If I pray right now, will you have missed your moment? Let's pray. Say, Father, thank you for not giving up on me. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. I need that. I know it. I haven't been living for you. I want to. I'm not strong enough. I can't do it on my own. But if the Holy Spirit, your strength, your power will come into my life, I know I can live for you, God. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit, all your power, all your strength. Jesus, you're my Lord. You died for my sins. You paid for them all. And now and forevermore, you're my God, my King, my Lord, my Savior. I'm yours in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Hey. Go ahead. That is so awesome. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.